So my name is Luis. I work at this institution called ISRIC. One of the missions of ISRIC is providing soil data, accurate and good quality soil data to the world. About eight years ago, the OGC performed a tectonic shift in the way it published its standards by adopting the REST APIs. Since 2016, they have been uh, publish, uh, publishing standards in this paradigm. And a lot of things have changed, most to the better. And one of the things that happen is, for instance, that the response formats have been opened up and include things such as JSON. And that changes everything. Data provision in the internet with OGC standards became something very, very different. And for in an institution like KISRIC, this is very important because it opens the door into the semantic web, into linked data. And in an institution like ISRIC, it's really important that our data connects to other sources of soil data and other sources of data that are related to that context. So this set in motion a number of changes in the landscape, and one of those is applications like PRES. And PRES, what it does, is a piece of software that is being developed in Australia. I see some people smiling, I hope they are. I don't know if they are from Australia, but anyway. So what this software does is that it serves linked data directly from a triple store through OGC compliant services. Now what is important here in the context of of this address is the Sense of Things API. This was the very first REST API specified by the OGC. It was meant to the Internet of Things. The context that we saw earlier, Daniele, with the monitoring of the algal blooms. However, this API is aligned with an earlier standard of the OGC called Observations and Measurements, which is for those that don't know what it is, it basically gives a conceptual structure to your data. And this directed at the general observation of natural phenomena. Again, links to the nice presentation by Daniela. This was 2016, 2019. The W3C publishes an ontology called SOSA, which you can see here. Do I have a pointer? Yeah which you can see here, and you, you, in this ontology you have concepts such as observation, procedure, uh, feature of interest, observ observable property. Those of you, for instance, that work in, INS, in the context of INSPIRE, none of this should be uh, strange, okay? What this means is that with this ontology, if I structure my data, if I create my knowledge graph complying uh, with this ontology, I immediately aligned with the Sense of Things API. And then the next step is the software. And actually, this is where things start to become a bit magical. Because you have software just like this GRLC, it's pronounced garlic, by the way, that from a Sparkle query can automatically generate a REST API. So this is a very simple example. And if you have never seen Sparkle before, don't get scared. Basically, this is a query that returns all the observations in my knowledge graph and has a few, a few annotations that allows the software to then produce a REST API from this query. And this happens without installing any software. It all happens in GitHub. It's, pretty, it's the, as close as it gets to magic in this context. But there is more. Because actually, if you know Sparkle and you look closely into this query, you can see that most of it, it's universal. This query, with some small changes, would apply to any kind of knowledge graph that uses this SOSA ontology. When we see, for instance, things as a, such as SOSA observation, this is universal for any kind of knowledge graph that complies to this ontology. And actually, within the Demeter project, a EU-funded project, Colleagues in the Poznan Computing Center are developing a tool that already pretty much can inspect a knowledge graph that complies with this ontology and automatically, without any other intervention, generate, thank you, a, knowledge, a, a REST API compliant with the sense of things specification. So this 
So this is my message with this paper and this talk, is that in the SOAP era, serving this kind of data was focused on the technology. We saw the, the last presentation was a bit like that. Okay, which is the most performant? How do I get my data in? Uh, how do I make the, my data accessible to that software? And this modern age of APIs is turning their data provision into something completely different. Your work can be completely semantic centered. It's all about the structure of your data. And in this case of the semantic web, how do you create a knowledge graph that can be immediately consumed by the software? I hope this makes sense. Enjoy Phosphor G and see you later. <laughs>